All right, we're going to get started. Uh, thank you for attending and watching another uh, segment of our Tech Time. Today we're going to be talking about testing for leaking coaxes, uh, brace plate leaks in uh, geothermal heat pump systems. So um, again, yeah, take some notes. If you got some uh, questions or things you would like to talk about, send us uh, an email. Um, sign up for future Tech Times and trainings at the website link there, as you can see. And today, uh, I'll be speaking again, Jim Strandland, part of the technical services uh, team. And uh, we are hosted by um, Entertech University and Entertech uh, Technology and Energy. Um, so thanks again for uh, helping us out, guys. And uh, again, these are members of our technical service team that answer your questions. And we're willing and able to help in any means that we can. So let's get rocking and rolling here. All right. <clears throat> There's many different uh, avenues and different ways that we've seen heat exchangers or coax or blaze, brace plates ruptured. So some of the causes, you know, can be, um, let's say we forgot, you know, put antifreeze in the system. There's no antifreeze. Um, maybe your antifreeze is weak. Maybe you got uh, a bad pressure switch. Uh, contactors welded shut so that the compressor constantly runs and will not shut off. That's, a, you know, another concern. Um, could we have a circulator pump maybe go bad and, and not get the proper flow? Um, manufacturing defect, that's always a possibility. Pretty rare, but it could be. Um, maybe your aquastats are set too cold and it's running at too cold of a temperature. Um, refrigerant charges is always a possibility. So there are many other ways that these things could happen. Uh, so, you know, use your caution, use your thinking head and, and, and uh, investigate the system as to why this would have happened. Uh, typically what you're gonna see is that um, these, uh, uh, one, I guess one thing really important that people forget, if you come to a compressor that's been shorted or grounded out or some of this kind of uh, scenario, a lot of people forget to uh, look and see, is the heat exchanger been ruptured? Is there water in the refrigeration system? And, uh, you know, first of all, you should be starting with a leak detector uh, to look for refrigerant leaks, uh, et cetera. And one thing that uh, the technical service team, one of the guys that have been in the field, we find that the uh, H10 Pro made by Bacharach now is probably the best um, leak detector that we have seen in the field. And it's a battery operated or electrical operated with a cord. It's the most expensive one that I have seen uh, for field techs, but it really works well. And don't forget, uh, we have the quick check two second acid test that you can look and see it helps determine if there's um, water in the system. I'm gonna show you a little video here of, uh, that was sent in to me and uh, right. take a look at this. Ready? Yep. So a pretty good sign that these people had a ruptured heat exchanger. As you can see, there was water coming out of it. And I know a lot of people have uh, condemned the compressor, got a new one, go to change it, and boom, wham, we'll find out this thing is full of water, and oh boy, we're in tough shape, then, <clears throat> tough shape, and you're better off starting out with a whole new system. So, um, yeah, well, there's a lot of different types of uh, methods that we could do testing. Uh, we'd like you to know that uh, these are all good methods that you can try. Disconnecting the hoses, uh, piping connections that are fit into the geothermal heat pumps units connections, but a place a balloon over them is another uh, way to do it. Turn on the heat pump in cooling mode and let the high pressure um, raise way up and see if the balloon expands. Uh, you're gonna get a little bit of expansion because of the heat temperature or heat generated through the heat pump, but I'll give it a little time before you can see um, if the balloon expands. Um, one thing that some people have done is draining the you know the fluid out of the heat exchanger as well and checking with the leak detector is another way that can be done but some of the leak detectors out there can react funny with uh, antifreeze smell or antifreeze solution so that's why we recommend double checking with our balloon test method which we'll get into here a little bit more so our, our preferred method is the balloon test um, and it will be a required testing procedure when requesting a replacement water heat exchanger or a unit, if it's in warranty. Um, we will be asking for, Intertech will be asking for visual proof, a um, little video, um, some pictures, 
and we're going to ask for an antifreeze uh, proof of antifreeze the protection in the system. Um, come across uh, in the last month, some people uh, don't read the manuals and find out that on a water-to-water -water unit, there's supposed to be antifreeze um, in the load side, and uh, a lot of people forget that. Again, remember that's a requirement and a safety feature for all our heat pumps. Uh, one other thing is that the guys should be carrying some kind of testing methods, right? Um, these are a bunch of different avenues for different types of antifreeze protection that are out there and available to us. Make sure your technicians uh, have the means to test in the field and not have to make a run back. Um, it's a great resource, great tool that every uh, service technician uh, should have with them or in their truck. Um, some of the ways of, of testing tools, okay? so. Everybody's got a geogooser, right? You should have a geogooser in your truck of some type or some means. All right. Um, so you can buy just a little guard nose adapter, all right? And it can be screwed into the back side of it, just like I'm showing you here. And a balloon can be placed on the end, something so that it won't come off, right? So really good. One thing to uh, um, keep in mind when you get a new balloon, you know, they're 99 cents for 15 of them or something like that. Stretch them out a little bit and loosen them up a little bit before you test it. Makes the show a, a lot easier if there's a, an expansion of the balloon. If you uh, want to do another one, you can always take another needle. Um, make it so that you've got something you can put the rubber uh, balloon over the end and it stays on there and you can do another test like that. So some great tools that you can have. It's really simple um, to do. Make sure that it has a PT needle in there so that you're able to put that in your PT ports that should be on all your units, correct? And um, we're gonna stick it on the machine, thread it in there, that's nitrogen charge and pressurize the refrigeration circuit and um, you will can sit and watch that if that expands. So it's pretty easy, isolate, isolate the loop field, uh, relieve the pressure that would be from the flow centers into the heat pump, if you have to disconnect the uh, piping or tubing to it, that's another source, but somehow we need to isolate the heat exchanger from the loop field connections. Stick your uh, your PT probes, the balloon test inside of that, and uh, pressurize like preferably with nitrogen or refrigerant, um, build that pressure up in the refrigeration system and let's see if the balloon blows. Some leaks may be kind of small, um, you may need to leave it overnight, come back in the morning and check it and see if that balloon has expanded, um, and if it does, then we know we have, uh, you probably have a leak inside of it. Um, some people have heard uh, air bubbles bubbling when they pressurize it, and that's all good too, but Intertech is gonna require a video proof, uh, picture proof, video proof um, of all the stuff that I've mentioned in the, uh, earlier. So I got a couple examples here I'm gonna show you. Um, this is a, another test kind of, uh, Tough to see, it may be a little bit blurry, but um, this is a, a real live test of a guy doing a balloon test here, as you can see. He's now pressurizing and pressurize the system with nitrogen. And as you will see, the balloon is getting harder and expanding more. So he has a positive proof that he has a leak inside his uh, system. As you can see there, he was able to disconnect uh, rubber hoses on the assembly and put the balloon on there. One other good thing to do in your video is take a picture, show us the uh, model number and the serial number of the units so you have it with you. As you can see, he showed you the nitrogen charging and it sees that the balloons have expanded more. So he has a positive, unfortunately a positive test um, of the problem. Here's another picture of the uh, still picture of the balloons expanded further as you can see. So it's really simple how to reconnect some of these things. It's um, every job is different, but this is gonna be required by Intertech. We wanna see this kind of proof, okay?
Now, um, some people can be uh, adaptive, right? So we have seen people not just use a balloon, but they were able to have a, have a rubber glove. And uh, if you can get something like that, that to expand and show, give you the proof in the field, more power to you. It's uh, just another avenue thing to work with. Um, this was actually done in, in our lab testing a unit. So that was kind of neat to see. Um, one thing I want you to see that there's a there's something wrong um, with this picture. And this person kind of uh, uh, did a little trick. And anyway, he uh, added refrigerant to his uh, system. and if you look at it, it's connected to his refrigeration gauges inside the unit. So all he did was pressurize the unit with refrigerant to show me a balloon. Well, we asked him after seeing this, we asked him to go back and do a proper balloon test and double check uh, his work. So anyway, don't try to fool us. We are going to look at antifreeze samples if we recall the unit. We are going to uh, test to make sure it's positive. We want to make sure that we don't have to rebill you or send one back. To you, that was nothing wrong with it. So please uh, do your due diligence and do your testing. Um, use all the methods and tools available. And if you got any questions, you're always welcome to uh, call tech support and we'll help you out with um, any means that we can. So that's our uh, short tech time today. Thank you guys all for attending. And remember, these are all recorded and they will be all on our YouTube channel at Intertech University. Intertech USA has got a link. Um, you're welcome to go watch these anytime. And share these with your coworkers if you can. If they uh, have some questions, um, please pass on. Let's all learn a little bit better. So with that, I'd like to close the program. Have a great, wonderful day, and uh, thank you for attending again. Mm -hmm.